Good morning, church. It's Thursday. And I've been thinking recently about something that is a, a, a really a big question in the minds of, of, of most people, of really of most religions, or of anyone who really uh, even entertains the notion of any sort of uh, God at all. Um, and that's, how much does God control here in the world? And I've been thinking about a couple of passages here. One uh, has to do with, um, well, it's very, very early on in the Bible. Uh, it's it's um, it's gen the end of Genesis, and the, the effects kind of spill over into the, the beginning, of, beginning of Exodus. Um, and that's the story of, of Joseph. You know, they made a musical about it, Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. If you've seen that, you kind of get the gist. Um, but basically what that was, what, what the story of that was that there was this, this uh, Joseph, the second youngest out of uh, 12 brothers, and he had visions that he was going to be greater than his brothers, that God had destined him for something amazing. And his brothers got jealous, as brothers are wont to do, and they, um, they, they decided, we're going to do something about this kid. And they, they, they took him, they kidnapped him, they faked his death, made his dad think that he was dead. And uh, they end up selling him into slavery. And in a roundabout, you know, kind of on, it took a rather circuitous path, but still ended up uh, in a position of greatness. He became, uh, I guess, the prime minister of Egypt um, because he, he told Pharaoh, hey, there's uh, seven years of plenty and then seven years of famine coming. We got to prepare. And Pharaoh said, hey, great, you do it. And so Joseph was in charge of this this grand rationing program that saved not only Egypt but the people of all the world in the in the area, um, and, and and so even though uh, that the God's path for for um, for Joseph wasn't straight there, God still did what God was going to do. Um, and then another story that I'm that I came to was the story of how Israel came to first have a king. Now, this comes from from 1 Samuel chapter 8. Now, uh, this is happening uh, maybe within a few generations after the people of God had had escaped Egypt and, and, and settled in the promised land. Now, during that time, uh, there was no king in Israel, but uh, the society was administered by judges. And judges, these judges were kind of um, a mix between a judge, as we typically think, um, and, and a priest, and um, and like a, a, a governor, or president, that kind of thing, having executive authority. Um, and, but there, there were many of them throughout the land, and really God was seen as their king. But then things change. Uh, Samuel, this prophet, uh, came up and was doing great things, but then here's what happens. I'm just gonna I'm gonna read the scripture to you briefly here. Uh, this is chapter eight, verse one and, and following. When Samuel became old, he made his sons judges over Israel. The name of his firstborn son was Joel. Was Joel. The name of his second, Ab Abijah. They were judges in Beersheba. Yet his sons did not follow in his ways, but turned aside after after gain. They took bribes and they perverted justice. That happened uh, too often with judges. Then all the other elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, You are old and your sons do not follow in your ways. Appoint for us then a king to govern us like other nations. But they were dis but they but the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to govern govern us. Samuel prayed to the Lord, and the Lord said to Samuel, Listen to the voice of the people in all that they say to you, for they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king over them. Just as they have done to me from the day I brought them out of Egypt to this day, forsaking me and serving other gods, so also they are doing to you. Now then, listen to their voice, only you shall solemnly warn them and show them the ways of the king who shall reign over them. And Samuel does warn them about the king that's to come. Uh, the first king of Israel was Saul. Saul was not a good king. Well, he started off all right, but then he was unfaithful to God. And God said, you're no longer fit to be king. And God has Samuel anoint the next king, David, possibly the most famous king in the Old Testament. Um, and David was seen as righteous before God, um, even though he treated people not that great. Uh, but Saul was horrendous. And, and Samuel warned them that Saul was going to be horrendous. They said, I don't care. We want him anyway. 
And so he anointed this king. And then Israel had a succession of kings until the kingdom divided between the north and the south and they had separate kings. And then there were tons of, of, uh, of invasions, diaspora, the people were spread out all over the place. Um, but eventually, out of the line of the second king came Jesus Christ. Moral of the story is that I don't believe that God is moving everything around like a puppeteer, pulling all of the strings for literally everything that's done. Like, God didn't make me do that. I don't believe God made me do that. But I believe that God acts in a way in the world that continuously bends history toward good, toward grace, toward love. Put it another way. God does not allow anything to happen that God cannot bring something good out of. God's original plan for Joseph would have been just straight to greatness, but his brothers interfered. And God said, all right, well, you want to try and mess with my plan? Okay, cool. We're going to stay in the effects of what you did, but I'm still going to do what I want to do out of this. And when the people said, hey, we don't want this judge stuff, and God, we reject you as king. We want a, a human king like everyone else. He says, all right, fine. I'll give you what you want. You're not going to end up liking it. But out of this, I'm going to bring you a far greater king than you can imagine. And a king that's, a diff that's king in a different way than you really think that you want. So remember, God doesn't allow anything to happen that God cannot bring something good out of. Uh, another flip side to this is, uh, I guess not a flip side, but another effect of this is uh, if you think that, you're, that, that your bad choices or that you've screwed up enough to mess up God's plan, believe you me, you and I are nowhere near powerful enough to mess up God's plans. Let's pray. Loving God, we thank you that uh, even though we may make things harder on ourselves and we might uh, make things get better, get worse before they get better, we thank you that your grace is always with us and that you are always acting for the good and that you are always, always, always ruling us with grace. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Thanks for joining me today, folks. Hope you have a wonderful day. Show love to everyone. One way to do that is by wearing your mask when you're out in public to keep yourself and each other safe. Make sure to get those vaccines when you can. I'll see you tomorrow.